Hello, my name is Jerome Reem, and in this video, I would like to tell you about an application of topological data analysis to professional basketball. In this video, we will be using topological data analysis to study diversity of playing styles in the National Basketball Association. Throughout this video, when I reference diversity, I'm not speaking of racial, religious, or political diversity, but diversity in playing style. For example, one player may get a lot of rebounds and block shots, or another player may shoot more threes and get more steals. This video is intended for a general audience. If you are interested in mathematical ideas discussed, there are many beautiful videos that I encourage you to watch if you want to gain a deeper understanding. In this video, we will introduce some topological data analysis tools and use them to quantify diversity within teams. We will then study the correlation between diversity and success, as well as studying diversity over time. In recent years, there's a growing concern for the aesthetic beauty of the game, as teams have become more homogenous in the pursuit of efficiency. Finally, we will look at how TDA can apply to roster building. The main tool that we will use is called persistent homology. We begin by assigning players points in space and studying the point cloud that they form. Here, I show three examples in two-dimensional space. The 85-86 Boston Celtics, the 95-96 Chicago Bulls, and the 2015-2016 Golden State Warriors. These teams are considered some of the best of all time. The 1986 Celtics and 1996 Bulls won the NBA championship for those years, and the 2016 Warriors hold the best regular season record of all time, even though they lost in the finals that year. More on that later. The selected statistics are total rebounding percentage on the x-axis and three-point attempt rate on the y-axis. These are normalized to the yearly average. For example, in 1996, Dennis Rodman rebounded at a rate over two and a half times that of the league average. Likewise, in 1986, Larry Bird shot three-pointers at over three times the rate of the league average for that season. Visually inspecting these point clouds, we see that the 1986 Boston Celtics are more spread out and more diverse than the 2016 Golden State Warriors, who are more clumped and less diverse in the selected statistics. The process of persistent homology will eventually give us a way to quantify this diversity. Using the point clouds, we will form a chain of shapes by connecting points. Then the features of the shapes, like how many connected components there are and how many holes there are, will be studied. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Once we have our point clouds, we begin growing bubbles around each point. For small radius, the shape formed by each team is just a discrete set of points, as no connections have yet been made. For r equals 0 0.07, the corresponding shape for the Celtics is eight points, whereas for the Bulls and Warriors, it's seven points. As we increase the radius, the bubbles begin to overlap. When the bubbles intersect, we connect the points with a straight line. When there's a triangle formed, we fill in the two-dimensional shape. You can think of the triangles as being made of a thin sheet of rubber. Similarly, when there are four points all pairwise connected, we fill in the three-dimensional tetrahedra. You could think of this as a triangle or pyramid made of clay. So when r equals 0.4, the shape formed by the Golden State Warriors consists of a three-dimensional tetrahedra made of clay glued on a two-dimensional triangle made of rubber. When the radius has increased to 0.5, we can observe that all three teams are formed by three connected components. When we increase the radius to 0.65, the Celtics now form a single connected component, whereas the Bulls are in two connected components thanks to Dennis Rodman being out here doing his own thing, as he often does. The Golden State Warriors have an interesting feature captured. Here, we have a one-dimensional hole. The shaped form could be molded into a circle with no cutting or gluing. More on this later. As we continue increasing the radius, the hole closes up, and eventually all of the points in all cases are connected, and one big blob is formed. So through this process, for each team, we have a sequence of shapes indexed by the increasing radius. Now I will tell you how we can use persistent homology to quantify diversity. The example shown is of the 2001 Los Angeles Lakers, another all-time great team that won the championship. This time, the statistics selected are usage percentage, 
a measure of what proportion of the team's shots a player takes, and free throw rate, a measure of how often a player shoots free throws. Again, both are normalized to the league average. For example, we see that Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal took a large proportion of the team's shots, and that Shaquille O'Neal was fouled and shot free throws at over twice the rate of the average player in 2001. We will now look at how persistent homology can quantify diversity of the Lakers in relation to these two statistics. In the beginning, there are eight points, and so there are eight connected components. When the radius is increased to 0 0.043, Ron Harper and Brian Shaw become connected, and now there are only seven connected components. We say that a component died when the radius was equal to 0 0.043. When the radius is increased to 0 0.067, another connection is made, and we are down to six connected components. We continue increasing the radius, marking down the radius whenever a connected component dies by being absorbed into another component. Finally, when R equals 0.511, Shaq joins the party and we are down to a single component. We can take the average of all of these values and obtain an average H0 persistence. This is a measure of the diversity of the Lakers. If all of these R values were small, all of the points would have been close together and they would not have been very diverse. Conversely, if the average H0 persistence is large, the points were spread out and so the players were more diverse. Now that we know how to quantitatively measure diversity, we can examine the relationship between diversity and success. This scatter plot for the 2007 season relates success as measured by regular season winning percentage on the x-axis and diversity in the selected statistics as measured by average H0 persistence on the y-axis. Here we are using three-point shooting and rebounding. As you can see, there is in fact a positive correlation. This supports the statement that diversity leads to success. Let's take a quick look at a couple of teams. The Cleveland Cavaliers were very diverse in 2007, whereas the Atlanta Hawks were not diverse. If you were wondering, the Cavs went on to the NBA Finals where they lost to the San Antonio Spurs and the Atlanta Hawks failed to make the playoffs. Let's look at the Cavs and the Hawks 2007 rosters. As we can observe, the Cleveland point cloud is far more spread out than that of the Atlanta point cloud. This is reflected in the average age zero persistence shown. Cleveland scores higher on this measure of diversity. While we cannot draw a picture of a point cloud in more than two or three dimensions, the concepts still hold perfectly well. Here I have selected eight statistics that measure playing style. Three-point attempt rate, free throw rate, rebounding, assists, steals, blocks, turnovers, and usage rate. Each year on each team, an eight-dimensional point cloud is formed. Then persistent homology is used to measure diversity on each team. Then for each year, we find the correlation between average age zero persistence and success. The results are shown. Notice that while the correlations are far from perfect, they are almost always positive, robustly indicating that diversity can help lead to success. For the 2013 season, the relationship between diversity and all eight stylistic indicators and success is shown. As we are in eight dimensions, I cannot draw any point clouds. Observe the positive correlation. The NBA champions this year were the Miami Heat. Now we consider how diversity has changed over time. As I said in the beginning of the video, there was growing concern that as teams push for analytic efficiency, teams are becoming more homogenous and the aesthetic beauty of the game is suffering. To study this, we can find the average diversity over all the teams each year. For this study, all eight stylistic indicators were used. As we can observe, diversity is on a downward trajectory and is monotonically decreasing since 2012. One additional thing I want to point out is this dip around 1996. During these seasons, the NBA temporarily moved the three-point line closer to the basket, incentivizing more players to shoot threes. This resulted in a decrease in diversity of playing styles. Here, I have selected several players to show the progression of their playing styles. If you are a basketball fan, I encourage you to pause the video and take it all in. In the top right plot, you have the first and most recent years for the selected players. Notice that in the colored text, 
the players' rookie years, their playing styles were quite different. However, over the years, the traditional forwards and centers shown, Brooke Lopez, Al Horford, Kevin Love, and Mark Gasol, have started launching three-pointers at a rate comparable to the shooting guards. Their free throw rates, which often indicates play close to the basket, has also decreased, in some cases quite dramatically. This all amounts to a great decrease in diversity, as shown in the bottom right. Finally, we look at an application of higher dimensional homology to roster building. Here we have the 2016 Golden State Warriors as shown earlier. As we grow the radius of our bubbles, a cycle appears at radius 0.615. This is a one dimensional hole detected by the first homology group H1. When R equals 0.663, Draymond Green and Sean Livingston become connected, resulting in the triangles being filled in and the cycle dying. The total persistence of this cycle is 0 0.048, which is not very long. However, it is a rare occurrence that a hole forms at all. Very loosely speaking, one could say that the Warriors had a hole in their roster. Note that the 2016 Golden State Warriors lost in the NBA Finals. The following season, the Warriors acquired one of the most high profile free agents in recent history, Kevin Durant. When we compare the point clouds for the 2016 and 2017 seasons, the overall shape is fairly similar. Andrew Bogut is replaced by Zaza Pachula, but most importantly, Kevin Durant appears in the middle of what once was a hole. As we start to grow the radius of our bubbles and build the simplicial complexes, we see that the hole forms on the left, whereas the addition of Kevin Durant prevents a hole forming on the right. Loosely speaking, the 2016 Warriors lost the championship due in part to a hole in their roster. However, the 2017 Warriors filled that hole with Kevin Durant and went on to win the NBA championship. In conclusion, TDA provides evidence to support the claims that diversity is correlated with success, that diversity has decreased over time, and that teams can use topological data analysis to fill holes in their rosters. This work was inspired by the paper shown and all data was collected from basketballreference.com. Thanks so much for watching.